Hey friends, today I'm going to be taking you guys through exactly how I list all of my items on Poshmark. I use Poshmark as my first platform that I sell on. And so I take all my pictures and then upload directly there and then I cross list from there. But I've gotten this question so many times about exactly how I list my items, what pictures I take, what is my process for listing. And so I'm going to take you guys through every step of the way. And I think that it should be able to help people that are just starting out on reselling, people that are just starting off on Poshmark, but it should also be helpful for those of you who have been reselling or been in the game for a long time. I think it's really helpful to see other people's processes because then we can improve our own. And it's also just a great way to learn more about what other people are doing and how you can better your own craft. So I'm going to take you guys through every step, including taking the pictures. We're going to white out the pictures together. I'm going to take you guys through the actual listing process and how I do my research to figure out what price I should sell things for and also how I get stock photos. So if you're new here, then welcome. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like thrifting content, but let's take you guys to my photo setup and we're going to start there. So welcome to my basement. This is my filming room. This is a room where I just have Lots of things that I use in my reselling business, including where I take pictures, which is against this wall actually. Now, what you cannot see behind you, I have two windows. That's all the light in this room is coming from these windows. There's no overhead light. So I'm pretty well illuminated, which is really key for taking good pictures. So the first things that you wanna make sure when you're picking out where you're gonna take pictures is, is there enough light? That's the biggest key to taking a good picture and biggest key in selling an item. If you don't have good pictures, then you will not sell your items. So you want to kind of give your piece the most chance it can get to sell well. So that begins with good lighting. So I have light coming from these windows, but that is not enough for making an amazing listing. So I also have a box light right here. Now I have two box lights and sometimes I'll use both box lights, but I find since I am taking pictures, in this corner and there's a wall right here. When I put my box light on this side of me and it bounces off of that wall, it gives me pretty even light throughout the piece. So this works for me. I know some people use actual like walled photo tents and you can do that as well. For me, I already have a pretty good setup for taking pictures because I have it against that wall where the light will bounce to all of it evenly. So for me, I didn't find it necessary to invest in a piece like that. But if you do not get good light and you have to use artificial like some people do, then that might be a worthwhile investment because you wanna make sure that you have a light background and that you're able to showcase your items with as much clarity and as much light as possible because light is your friend. So I'm gonna turn on this light. So now it's even brighter in here. Now I'm gonna show you guys exactly my setup. Let's take you over there. So now we're in the corner. <laughs> I have the light coming from this way. I have a wall right here. And this is actually a very light yellow color. When we bought our house, this wall was already like a light yellow and I could repaint the whole room but for me the yellow has actually worked okay because then sometimes white pieces can show up a little bit better on this color background and for most other colors it just looks white so that's good and as you can see it's bouncing light off of this wall and so it's still getting a pretty even coating of light when I'm with the wall on my side do you see that so now I take pictures as they're hanging now I used to do flat lays, which is when you put something and you just lay it flat, like on a surface, you can do it on the floor, you can do it on a bed. I used to do that, but it was really hard on my back. So in my experience, hanging things to take pictures of them has been really helpful and it makes things move a lot quicker. I also have quite a few hangers that I use and they're all the exact same hanger. So I'm able to do batches of pictures and that's what I would highly recommend to you as well. Batching your photography is the easiest way to get lots of photos done, especially if you can sit down and put all of the pieces on a hanger, have many hangers so that way everything is hung. All you have to do is when you're finished with a piece, take it off its hanger, throw it in your done pile, and then pick up the next piece and put it directly on the wall. I find that to really cut down on my time. If I'm individually putting a hanger on every piece as I'm going through and like fixing it, it just takes a lot of time. If you can do it all at once, you're gonna be much better off. And that goes for more than just getting your pieces ready to photograph. You wanna take photos in bulk and then you also wanna list in bulk. You wanna go through and white out backgrounds in bulk because it just does save time overall. So now I have this set up. I just have a literal nail in the wall. That is all you need. You just need a wall in your house and you can start a reselling business. You can start with what you have. It's super easy. So now I have all these things on just regular clothes hangers and I just hang them on my wall. So the piece that we're gonna list today, I just grabbed. It is this black 
long puffer coat and it's from a new to me brand so it's going to give us a good opportunity to list and also to research and do things that I've never done for this brand so it's a good spot to start for anyone that doesn't know what they're doing <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with this brand so it should be a good even playing field for all of us this is from the brand noise and I know this should do really well it's a Canadian brand but black is notoriously hard to list and to take pictures of so I'm going to tell you guys everything that I would do for this piece so I'm going through and buttoning all of its buttons. I'm making sure that it's gonna look its very best for taking this picture. So now we have the piece hung, the light is hitting it. It's looking its best. And now I'm gonna start my picture taking process. So I'm gonna make sure to screen record all this so you guys can see exactly what I am doing. Now we are going to take pictures. So I'm going into my camera app and I use my phone to take pictures for all of my pieces. It's super easy and I find it to just work the best. So whenever you open your camera, it's gonna start off in four to three mode, but you wanna go and click four, three here on the bottom and change it to square mode because Poshmark requires you to change all of your pictures into square mode. It will automatically crop it to a square, much like Instagram. You can now use pictures that are not a square and you can like zoom out and zoom in to get the square that you want. But if you start off with it in square mode, you're gonna thank yourself later. So this is the piece and I have it in square mode. Now you're gonna be tempted to center this and you do want to have all of your listings centered. So normally you would wanna take a picture like this. Now, because of what I'm gonna be doing later on with photo room and removing the background of my image for my cover photo, my first photo, I always step back and give myself some room here on the bottom. So my first picture is literally going to look like this. Even though it's not completely centered, I'm going to be able to go and zoom in later on and it's gonna make more sense when we get to that step. Now, for the rest of my pictures, I am going to just center them normally. So for black, I'm also, you kind of have to play around. Do you want your light to be on it? You're gonna wash your black out. I'm gonna center over here on the wall and then that should give me a pretty clear black picture. Now, I'm gonna go in and take pictures of details. So for this, there's a lot of details. Even on the zipper pull, we have some branding, so I wanna get pictures of that. We also wanna get pictures of the ends of the sleeves. So I'm gonna pull that over. It's a nice puffer. We see the zipper all the way down. We also have buttons here on the inside, so I'm gonna take pictures of that as well. We have pictures that we wanna take of the pockets, and then on the side here as well, we also have more buttons a pocket and a zipper. So we're gonna get pictures of all these detail shots. You wanna get a picture of anything that somebody could ask you about. So I'm also gonna take pictures of the materials tag. If you do not take a picture of the materials tag, I guarantee you, you will get so many people asking you what the fabric makeup of it is and also how to take care of it. So I always try to provide as much information and pictures as possible. And you wanna definitely make sure you get pictures of the tag, you wanna get pictures of the size, you need to get pictures of the back. You literally just take pictures of every angle you can think of and give some close-up shots of detail as well. And then you should be okay. But more is better than less and then you can go through and pick and choose which pieces, which pictures of the piece you actually want to show. So I'm gonna take pictures of all of those different angles and give it my best go at getting as much of the piece pictured as possible. Now, as I'm going through and taking pictures, of, especially of the inside tags, it make your life a lot easier down the road if you're able to look at all of the inside tags and see if there's a style number on these tags. Now, for this piece, I just see that it says Akira down here on the bottom. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with a style name, but I took a picture of it so that later on when I'm doing research, I can know for sure if this piece is called that because that will make my life super easy when I am looking for photos of it that are already taken or also just details about this coat that I don't have to provide myself because the best people to market their items are the people originally selling it. So if I can find the original listing for this coat, I can literally just copy and paste the description into my actual listing that I'm creating. And that really cuts down on my own work. So that is the plan. So I took pictures of those inside tags and those are really where you find some invaluable information. So never skip the inside tags. You can also find information on some pieces like Madewell will include what year and what month even sometimes the piece is made. So so that's really helpful for narrowing down your search of what the title of this item could be. So 
I took pictures of this item and I did them all in square mode. We have lots of information now. We have lots of pictures. Now it's time to get them ready to actually list them. So normally I would take a bunch more pictures at the same time. I would be taking pictures of at least 20 more items probably. But for today, we're just going to do this one item and I'm going to take you from start to finish of how to list it and how to list it well. So now we've come upstairs to my desk and I do all of my listing, all my photographing, everything basically on my phone. So I'm going to do a screen recording for you guys to show you exactly what I'm doing here. I now have all of these pictures that I took of this jacket. We have all these details and now I'm going to go and pick which piece I want to be my cover photo. So sometimes I'll use stock photos if I can find them of my item, but in this case I am going to do a whiteout just so you know what it looks like as well. So let's leave my photos and then I'm going over to my work tab here but I have what's called Photo Room. So Photo Room is a great application. I highly recommend getting it, but you can see that I was whiting out some other things on here, but I have the free version of this and that's why I do some pains while I'm taking photos to zoom out because later on I'm gonna be able to zoom in and get rid of all of the watermarks and logos that they put on if you have the free application. But I recommend even just starting with the free application, they'll try to get you to pay for pro, but if you are cheap and want to save as much money as possible, then I highly recommend starting with what you have and starting with the free version. So now we have all these pictures that I took. Now I'm gonna start with the picture that I took far away that I gave room at the bottom for. And now you're gonna see why I did that. Because my phone takes good enough pictures that it will do well enough that I can zoom in further later. So even now I can grab this picture and move it around in the picture. So if it wasn't, in frame before like what if it was up to the side then I can just move it and it also gives you guides so there's the guide for the middle I'm gonna line it up and leave it in the middle and then you can see photo room it has their logo down there in the bottom right but that doesn't matter we're gonna get rid of it eventually so now remove logo for pro no we're gonna hit save image so we saved the image and that is it now I would normally do this in bulk and you can see below I've done this for many other pictures because um, that's just how it works. You've got to do more than one at a time. Otherwise, it's very time consuming. So that is just taking the whited out picture. Now, what we're going to do is start our listing in Poshmark itself. So now I whited out that picture. But before I go in and create a listing on Poshmark, I am going to go and do some research on Google. So I have my Google Chrome app. Now, I did a little bit of research when the camera was off to make sure that I could show you this really well. So I first usually start with writing in if I can find that style name on those inside tags. So I did write in Noise Akira, and this is what that showed me when I pulled it up. It showed me the Noise brand, which is what I'm looking for, and it also showed me a lot of black coats that look kind of similar to mine. So that's really exciting. I also see that Madewell sold a Noise Akira long quilted parka, and mine is definitely a long parka so that's encouraging and then i see this first picture right here this poshmark one that is literally my code that is so helpful now some people use stock photos some people don't i don't mind using stock photos personally but this piece looks like it sold for 50 dollars, and these are literally all the pictures that i took look exactly like this this is my jacket that i have so i'm gonna look at this and they said noise akira parka and then it was new with tags haven't even taken out the plastic they don't have any information really in their description but they do have stock photos, which is super helpful. Now on Poshmark, if you hold down, you're gonna get these options. So I'm not gonna use those options, but if you click one time, you can pull up the picture and then take a screenshot. So I'm gonna take screenshots of all three of these pictures here on Poshmark. If I found a result on eBay, usually you can hold down on that, but when in doubt, just take a screenshot because you'll be able to crop later. So. I have those pictures of that. So that was on Poshmark app. I'm gonna go back to where I was looking on Google because I wanna get some details about this piece as well. I don't want just the pictures. I would also love it if they gave me some information on the piece, like the name of it or something like that. So then I went to this Madewell listing and this is also my coat, just in a different color, which is really helpful. So things are not always this easy. They also give me the noise size chart, which I think is really helpful. So I'm gonna click on these pictures too because I would love to have that size chart to include in my listing. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. And then this is not the right color of my coat, but it does show you from that side view. I think that's interesting with that zipper that you can wear it like that. So maybe I'll take a picture of that and just reference it later. 
but this is called the Noisa Cure Long Folded Parka. So now that I'm here, I'm gonna copy and paste that title. You can see that this originally cost $260 for this parka. So now I have that title copied and then I'm gonna scroll down. And even though this isn't the right color, I can still use all this information because it's about the same exact coat. So I like to find little workarounds when I can. Oh my gosh, those are cool. Anyways, well, I like to use all this information. If it's already made for me, that will make my life super easy when I go to check out. Now, things are not always usually this easy. I don't normally have a style name and I didn't even know that was a style name. So that was very lucky for me. But what I do normally do is go over to this other Google app. So we have a Chrome app, which is just like your normal searching. People ask me about this all the time, how I do reverse image searching. And this is how I do it. And it's super easy. You need the Google app. So instead of Chrome, we have this Google app in my top right, right here. It looks like this. Now you can search like a normal app and it usually populates over from my Google Chrome as well. But you know what else it can do to the far right? Do you see this little, little camera button? That camera button is so helpful. If you're in a thrift store and you don't know what something is or you don't have an actual logo, look at this. You can usually, you can literally just use your camera and search right then and there. And you can literally look up, let's look up what camera I'm using. I'm going to just hit that button and then it literally will reverse image search. It'll give you exactly what camera I'm using, which is so helpful. And my mic too, how helpful. You can literally look, I am using the Canon EOS M50. It literally got that right. It's pretty accurate in my opinion and I am using a Rode mic. So that is super helpful. Now I use this all the time for clothes though. So now if I didn't have all of these pictures now of the actual listing of the actual stock photos of the piece, I could go in here and just click a picture that I have and see if it would give me what it is. So I'm looking when I do that big parka from further away, I do get a lot of other brands. So this wouldn't have been able to give me the exact name, the exact title, what it was called, but for some other pieces, it does work like that. So I have another pair of pants here. These are Lily Pulitzer pants and these I can find from doing reverse image search. Tons of other people that have listed things that are either the exact same or similar. And then usually you can just follow these links and figure out what they know about the piece. And it's just a kind of a piecing together game. That's what I find a lot of listing to be. If you're not just listing a piece with only your own knowledge, if you're not doing any research, listing is super easy, but I find to sell the most items and to sell the best items, it does require usually some work. So now that I have all of these stock photos, which are very helpful, you can also go and, oh, look at that. When I put in the actual stock photo that I took from that other person, it comes up with the Madewell listing for my exact coat, which is nice. So now I have this pulled up on my other Google Chrome app. It has all the product details for this jacket. And I also have stock photos and I have the pictures I took. So now it's time to list friends. Let's head on over to Poshmark and I'm going to that bottom, that little cell tab. It has the little camera. It's in the bottom middle of the app. It will look a little bit different on the desktop. It's in the top right. It says sell on Poshmark. You can click that too. I'm just showing you on the phone because I feel like this is definitely the easiest way to sell. So now I'm gonna go over to the bottom left where it has the little picture icon and I'm gonna grab all of my pictures in order of what I want them to show up as. So I have these pictures that I grabbed of the actual stock photos. I have the picture I whited out, I'm gonna grab that. I have that brown coat picture and then I still have all of these pictures. Now, I wanna show a picture of some of the up close details to make sure that people know that they're in great condition. I need the tag, I need a picture of the back and then I want those pictures of the inside for sure and you can use up to 17 photos. So I have 11 clicked, but I'm gonna just grab a few more. I have enough here that I have tons and tons of information, um, but I'm just gonna add more <laughs> rather than less. And this will be handy, I'm sure, for later. Oh, let's get that size chart, okay. So I just grabbed 16 pictures. Now it's gonna put them in here for me. Now this one, since I took a screenshot, you can see I can scroll up and down. That's not exactly normal, but I am going to go and just crop it to where I want it to be. That one looks good. I'm gonna go through each one individually. Now this is where, when you cannot find stock photos, this is when this comes in handy. See the photo room in the bottom right? Right now, all we're gonna do is zoom in and crop it to be in the middle. 
So now we don't have the logo on the bottom and it just looks like you used the pro version which you would have to pay for normally. And all you had to do is take a picture a little further away. There's your helpful hint for the day. And now we're gonna scroll over. We have the brown one. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit for that one. It's a really cute coat too in brown. And then all my other pictures I took in the actual square mode. So those are all good except for this size chart that I took a screenshot of. So I'm gonna include that size chart because people always want measurements. Now for this, I have the size chart that gives the actual measurements of the item, which is super helpful. But I know a lot of people are kind of divided on if you should give measurements in your listing or not. Now, I personally, I don't. Unless something doesn't have a size on it, then I will take measurements and I will take measurements directly with my phone as well. I don't get out a ruler. I don't get out measuring tapes usually. On our iPhones, we have a measurements app that the phone comes with. I will literally just take that out, put the piece on the ground and take measurements and take a screenshot. It's very easy for me to do. And I find that it does just as well as using like rulers, but I just, I just think it's a little easier. Maybe it's just because I like to do everything on my phone. It just makes it a little bit uh, quicker for me if I don't have to pull out measuring tapes and like bend over and things. Cause I also just, you know, don't want to bend over for me. Now I have all my pictures cropped. Now, so top right of cropping photos, we're gonna sit, we're gonna hit next, and then you can pick your cover shot. And there are a lot of good options to choose from. I like this first one, and I like this one where she has her outfit out. I also, ours is actually a really good photo too, but since I have stock photos, I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna do the one where it's closed, just because I think that's a classy picture. Now, if I was using pictures that were my own, then I would use this editing tab. I always use the editing tab. If I'm editing pictures that I took, since this is a picture that has already been taken by a professional photographer and edited for this website, I'm not gonna edit it again because sometimes it can look really crazy if you try to edit it on top of other editing. Maybe I could do mild, but I'm just gonna leave it in the original. But if this was my own picture, if I were going to go back and choose my picture as the cover shot, then I would definitely click mild for editing. I always do something because even though my, my original shot is actually really good for this one, usually black is hard to take thick pictures of, I would use the mild feature and just give it a little something and then move forward. But I am going to go back now and click that pic first picture, the stock photo, and that's gonna be my first picture. Now you can see all my pictures have populated. You can also include a video of your item, which I find to be helpful if it's a fabric that's really hard to get like the shimmer of on camera, or if it's just a piece that's really hard to show laying right. Like if it's a dress that has a lot of like flow to it, I like to take videos of that sometimes. But now we're gonna go in for that information that we collected on this. So the title that we found for this piece was the Noise Cure Long Quilted Parka. So I'm gonna copy and paste that. So I'm gonna allow paste and then that will automatically pop in. So now that is what they called this piece, but I'm gonna add some extra details. And that's what I normally would do too if this piece that I was listing was not something that I had all the information for. So the Noise Akira Long Quilted Parka. So I'm gonna add that it's in black. And then I'm also gonna say what size it is. So it's a size, I'm not even sure. I've gotta go back and look at my picture. It's a size medium. So now I wrote size just shorthand, capital S, capital Z. I just find that usually I need a lot of my characters in my title. So I usually always do that, but you can always come up with your own little ways that you normally list things. So black size medium. And then here, if I needed to add in more details, I put in a little line where I kind of think of things that people might be searching. So. What else would you be? A black puffer coat. So maybe I'll just put black puffer coat here instead of just quilted parka. So now that's gonna be my title. It's not new with tags. If it was new with tags, new with tags, I'd put capital NWT at the very beginning. But for this piece, it's not new with tags. So that's what that's going to look like. Now for my description, I am going to go over and literally take these product details because that is literally what is correct about the item. And this even says here, this description was written by noise. So I'm giving them credit for that description. Now, that's what I always include. And then I'm also going to show you guys what I normally write for pieces that I don't have information for, because I would include that even if I do get information from other people. So this coat is in like perfect condition. So I'm gonna say that in excellent condition with no flaws, those are the things that people need to know and will ask you about over and over again if you do not include them in the listing. So in excellent condition, no flaws, 
gently used, and then I'll add a period. And then I usually reiterate what was in the title. So I'm gonna say Akira style black puffer parka from noise, Oop. from noise in great condition. So honestly, I usually reiterate things over and over again. Now for descriptions, I find that they don't really matter. I used to labor over descriptions and spend hours not hours, that might be an exaggeration, working on crafting them. I would tell people where they should wear the item. I should. I would tell people what they should pair it with to look the best. And I would do all of this effort. And I was like, who cares about that stuff? When I'm looking at buying something, I look at the pictures and I see if there's anything wrong with the piece. And if there's nothing wrong with it, then I buy it. So I realized that I did not need to spend tons of time curating my descriptions. If I reiterate what is in the title and tell them at least once what type of item it is, if it's a dress, if it's a jacket, if it's a coat, I find that that paired with just telling them if there's flaws and what condition it's in will get the job done and you don't have to spend time doing it. The only reason I did a long description this time is because I didn't have to write the long description. It was already right there for me and super easy for me to find. So I found the stock photos, I found that description, I added a little bit of my own description, and that's pretty much what I would add in there. So now we're going down here, we have all of our pictures, we have a title, we have our description, we're going into category. Now this is a women's, and this is a coat, it's a big puffer coat, I'm gonna see if they have a puffer. They also, it's a parka, but I don't see like parka as an option. So I'm gonna pick puffer because puffers are also really on trend right now, so that's a good piece, that's a good thing to be saying. In the sizing here, it's a medium. And then for the brand, it's from the brand Noise, which is a Canadian brand. So I don't know, oh, it is gonna be in there, that's great. And it's in black. Now for colors, you can choose two colors. You can choose up to two colors, which is kind of hard when you have something that's like a rainbow colored. But whatever color is the main color is what you wanna pick first because that's what's gonna show up first in search. So I picked black and this piece is literally just black. But if I had a piece that was blue and orange, but it's mostly blue, I'd pick blue and then orange. And then I would go in that order. And then something to be said too, for brand, I picked noise as my brand, but some pieces are a little bit more ambiguous, maybe on what the brand is, or maybe it's an older piece, or maybe the brand's not in the brand catalog. If you run into that, that can be hard. So there is an unbranded choice where you can pick no brand. I don't suggest doing that unless it's a last resort kind of thing. If a piece is older or vintage, I always pick vintage as the brand. And I do find that I sell a ton of vintage items, even if they come from a different brand. But if you have the brand and you have vintage as an option, I would click the brand as being what the brand is. So like if you have a vintage Winnie the Pooh sweater, I would list it probably under Winnie the Pooh if you're able to, and then use the style tags that we're gonna get to in a second to write vintage. Because you wanna have vintage in it somewhere, but you don't need to have it as the brand, especially because if you're cross-listing over to other platforms, some platforms don't have the brand vintage as an option. So I'll give you an example of that in a second, but we just did the colors black. This is not new with tags, but if you go in here, you can click yes or no. I never click no. I only click yes if I have a new with tags item. Otherwise it's optional and I leave it blank. Now style tags is optional too, but we're gonna add style tags. You better believe we are. Now this is where it comes into play, especially when you're dealing with vintage items, is that on platforms like Mercari, if you're listing on Mercari, they do not have the brand vintage as an option. So you have to click no brand in Mercari, but you can carry over your style tags from Poshmark to Mercari. So if this was a vintage item, I would 100% put vintage in the tags here because then that's the only way for people to know it's vintage over on Mercari. But for this piece, this black puffer coat, I am gonna see if puffer is in their style tags. It's not but they do have so many of these style tags that you can choose from, and they are really, really helpful. So something like Gorpcore might be something I would pick because it's kind of like outdoorsy, that kind of a brand. But there's also like all of these, all of these are great places to start if you don't know what to put in your style tags. If it can relate to any of these, this is the way that they are going to be able to match you to search results. So if 
somebody is looking for a specific style rather than for a specific piece like maybe somebody's not going to look for a noise black puffer vest or puffer coat from me but maybe they are looking for a y2k piece or they're looking for something that's tie-dye this is how you can help narrow down your search results to get in the front of eyes of more people if they're not looking for the specific title or something in your description so now let's see what else we have here i don't think my piece really <laughs> relates to a lot of these but they are really helpful and you never want to skip doing your tags this, I'm going to say, is a puffer, it's gorb core, and then maybe I'll say minimalistic, just because I saw that one as an option, minimalist. So that's my three tags for this piece, and I could say, like, cruelty-free. That's one of their big things for this company. They say cruelty-free all the time. It's made in Canada. So honestly, I might change minimalist to Canada even, just because some people really like Canada-made things. I'll just do that, and we'll see what happens. I'm always experimenting with tags. Now, when it comes to the pricing of your item... For original price, unless your piece is very expensive, like hundreds of dollars expensive, I never actually put the original price. So for this piece, I think I know it starts at $260. So I could put that in there, but let's watch that suggested price. So right now the suggested price is $61 to $130. If I put in a zero here, it goes from $51 to $110. So your original price that you put in here, it does affect how much they do expect you to make from a piece. But for a lot of pieces, if the original price is not over $100, it does not make sense to add the original price. If your original price was not that expensive, you just put it at zero. Just put it at zero because that is what everyone will do and it often helps you to sell your item for more. So I always do that zero unless it's expensive. This piece, I actually have that original price and it was expensive. We added in that original price. Now we're going to take a look at this suggested price with that little arrow right underneath the listing price. That is such a helpful tool and I use this all the time. So I'm gonna click on that and then this is gonna show me pieces that sold that are similar to the one that I'm trying to sell. So we can see a couple of my piece, pieces from this brand that sold for 50, 70, 99, 45, 50, 100. My piece, I think I can get this to sell around 100 because it is black, it's in great condition, and I think it's really nice, and I'm going to cross list this. It might not sell on Poshmark, but I think it will sell somewhere. So normally, when you're listing your listing price, you want it to be a little bit higher than what you actually expect to sell it for. You could list it at exactly what you're expecting to sell it for, but people will always offer you no matter how low you list something. So it makes the most sense financially to list something for more than what you want to make from it so that when people give you an offer, it'll be close to what you actually expect. And also for people that are full-time resellers or even part-time, if you have a virtual assistant, I have Posture VA. It shares my closet for me, but it also sends out automatic offers on pieces. As soon as this piece gets a like, I have Posture VA within 10 minutes of that like, send out an offer to the person that liked it for 20% off plus discounted shipping. So if I don't list a little bit higher than what I want to make, when I get that 20% taken off, I'm going to be looking at a really low sales price compared to what I actually want. So for this piece, I really want to sell this for like 80 to $100. So I might list this at 150, honestly. And I know that's high, but I'm expecting to get offers. And that's just the way I sell. There are different ways to list your items. There's different ways to sell your items. And a lot of the ways are all good. But this I'm going to list, I think, at 150 And then I can always bring down the price. It's just more hard to bring up the price later. So let's just say 150 Now, I'm not going to do discounted shipping. I used to try doing the $5.95 shipping. I find that it doesn't make any impact on if you're going to actually get that sale or not. So now I'm going to look at this over. I have all those great pictures. I have that size chart in there. I've got a title. We got the description. We got all of these different pieces in here. The only thing I didn't mention was quantity, but that's only if you have multiples of something. Normally you won't have that unless you're doing something like liquidation or you find multiples at the thrift store that you're reselling. So we have all of those details in here. And then the next step is to just hit next. Now you can share it to parties and things, or you can you know, connect your Facebook, all these different things, but I am just going to hit list. That's what I always do. So then when I come on here, I looked at my notifications to see how everything is doing, but then I would go on and list the next piece. That's what I do. I repeat that over and over again. And that's how I list all my items. And then I use Vendu to cross list them onto Mercari and eBay. But that's the process. You take the pictures, you zoom out a little bit, you white out the background, you try to find stock photos, try to find anything that will make your life easier when it comes to the listing process. And I like to do that by 
doing a reverse image search or just by Googling if I have that style name, that was so helpful today and that does not often happen. But that's another thing. You just need to check those kind of words all the time. They're always, they're usually weird words and they don't make a lot of sense. But if you just take the time and do at least one Google search, sometimes that can really pay off. So I did find the style name today and then I went through and showed you how I actually list and the kind of things that I would always put in a description. I would definitely do that. No flaws, if there's no flaws, gently use, good condition, great condition, excellent condition, fair condition, all those things. And then hit that list button and send it off to the races and always be open to taking offers. But it's possible to make a lot of money on Poshmark. I do all the time. And I do think that Poshmark is a great application. So if you guys want to see more videos on how to start a reselling business, how to list things, how to picture things, any other kind of video you want to see, any how to's, let me know in the comments down below. And make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. If you guys like thrifting and reselling content, I make videos three times a week. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And until the next video, bye.